Now we're going to talk about the chest pain differential diagnosis and features. So this is very useful actually for step one because you might get a question stem with chest pain, but there's many different causes of chest pain, so you need, you need to be able to identify what the cause is first. And we're going to talk about the differentiating features. And note, this is also ridiculously useful for the clinical. You're going to get tested on this over and over again once you get to the clinical rotations. So you want to know this slide. So the first one is obviously is coronary artery disease, which we just talked about. And what were the symptoms from coronary artery disease? Let's say, let's say, let's talk stable angina. What were that the cardinal three symptoms? Remember, it was that crushing substernal chest pain. It has to be triggered by exertion or uh, relieved by rest or nitroglycerin. And then, if you have something more severe, say unstable angina or a, a STEMI, then you can get radiation and pain of that that pain radiating to the left shoulder or jaw. You can get nausea or vomiting. You can get shortness of breath. Okay. Now another. Uh, cardiac cause of chest pain is pericarditis. We talked a little bit about this. Remember, remember the the cause of pericarditis is basically it's inflammation of that per of pericardium of that outer sac of the heart. So this pericarditis, what happens is it's worsened with lying flat and it's relieved by lying, leaning forward. So it's a positional pain, and it's positional because when you change positions, you're going to change where the heart, the heart lies in the chest. And when you're leaning forward, you're going to really, it's going to be less rubbing of the heart against other things. So it's less, um, less inflammation, less irritation, and less pain. The other thing is that's notable for pericarditis is you're going to hear a friction rub on auscultation. So remember that friction rub on auscultation means a pericarditis. Um, next is another heart symptom. We actually cover this one, heart pathology, I mean. And the heart pathology here is the aortic dissection. And do you remember what the symptoms of aortic dissection was for the pain symptoms? Remember the type of pain? It's a sudden tearing chest pain. So remember it dissecting, so it's a sudden tearing. And it radiates to the back. Remember what type of patient will get this? Remember, the, this is a patient with, this is an elderly patient, and the, the key factor here is hypertension. They can have other atherosclerotic risk factors, such as um, smoking, diabetes, blah, blah, blah. Now we can go over to pulmonary causes, and can you think of any pulmonary causes that can cause chest pain? So remember, the lungs are also in the chest, so they can cause chest pain. So things like pneumothorax, pulmonary embolism, and pneumonia all can cause chest pain. Um... Now they have different features, but for example, pneumothorax will have a sharp stabbing chest pain, and the the key um, thing is often these are worse with inspiration, um, and we call this a pleuritic chest pain because remember this is a problem in the lungs, and we inspire, we stretch out the lungs, and when it causes us more pain. The other key feature is a shortness of breath, but again we're gonna you can see shortness of breath in heart attacks as well, but you see it more often in pulmonary causes. Now, another system that can be affected that can cause chest pain is actually the gastrointestinal or esophageal problems. Um, do you remember? Do you know any of those causes? So there's two I'm thinking of right now. One in the esophagus, and that is esophageal rupture. And for gastrointestinal, that would be GERD. Okay. So, um, so obviously, GERD would be causing irritation. It can be sensed in the chest as well. So esophageal rupture. Um, do you know what can cause that? Remember, it caused, it's caused by intense retching. So a patient who's, who's vomited a lot, they can rupture their esophagus. And the pain will be in the lower chest. It's in that epigastric region right below the sternum. Now this GI pain, is, it's positional. So it's often, it's especially GERD, it's worsened after lying down after meals and it's relieved by sitting up. So that reflux, remember if you're, if you're lying down, that reflux is easier to go up. If you're sitting up, it has to work against gravity. So that acid can't go back up. And then um, you also relieve the pain by taking antacids for GERD. Again, you're, you're counteracting that acidity. Again, it's worse after meals, and it's associated with symptoms such as, it's basically associated with GI symptoms, so regurgitation, nausea, and difficulty swallowing. Now, there's one other common cause of chest pain that we have to be aware of. Um, this one is musculoskeletal, and it's costochondritis. So it's inflammation of the, of the junction between the, the cartilage and the bones of your ribs. And the key thing here is that this is a, um, it's a localized, the brief sharp pain, and the key is it's reproducible. So if you press on that ch on the chest area, on the ribs, it's going to cause more pain. Um, so it's reproducible, unlike the other ones where if you press on them, it doesn't really change it. Now this one also is worsened with movement or changes in position. It can, it's totally musculoskeletal, and um, movement and changes in position are also musculoskeletal. And often these patients have a history of repetitive activity, and that's what's going to cause this inflammation of the costochondral junction. 
So again, history of repetitive activity. So if you pay attention to all of these Boda terms, it can really help you differentiate which what is the cause of the chest pain. And you really need to figure that out because the number one thing you have to rule out when you have a patient with chest pain, just chest pain, is you have to rule out they have a heart attack because that can be, or actually a lot of these can actually be life-threatening, but heart attack is something that's really scary and you want to make sure that the patient does not have.